praise the Lord. Before we hear the preach of God's word today, let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank thee for thy faithfulness. As thou hast said, thou wilt never leave us nor forsake us, giving thanks unto thee, for thou art good, for thy mercy endureth forever. For our trust is in thee, O Lord, as it is better to trust in thee than to put confidence in men. It is better to trust in thee than to put confidence in princes. We trust in thee, O Lord, with all of our hearts. We lean not to our own understanding. In all of our ways we acknowledge thee, that thou shalt direct our paths. As we commit our ways unto thee, that thou shalt bring the pass. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Before I hear the preach of God's word today, I'd like to give a short testimony from the book of James once again. The epistle of the apostle James, James chapter 1. In James chapter 1, beginning of verse 5, it is written, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not and it shall be given him. Verse 6, but, but what? But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. When you ask in faith, you cannot waver. Mark eleven twenty four. What does the Lord Jesus Christ say once again? Therefore I say unto you, What things you ever desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. When are we to believe? When we pray. We're to believe what? That we receive those things we prayed for. Ecclesiastes Chapter 5, once again. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 1 that is written, Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God. And be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools, for they consider not that they do evil. According to this verse of Scripture, when we go to church, have church, assemble ourselves together, gather the name of the Lord, what are we to be there for? To hear, not to give the sacrifice of fools. Therefore, a church that's pleasing to God is not a seen church. A church that's pleasing to God is a church that's hearing the word of God. Seven times the Lord Jesus Christ says to seven churches in the book of Revelation, chapter 2 and chapter 3, let him that hath an ear hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. How many churches I've been to, when we've left, I've asked my wife, if you ask anybody in the congregation, what do the preacher preach? How few can answer. How many times in churches, they're just spewing out a whole bunch of stuff, and people are amening hallelujah, glory to God, and nobody's hearing what the Spirit is saying unto the churches. How many churches, they're not given a chance for the Holy Ghost to speak, as they're too busy singing. If you're busy singing, you're not doing what? You're not hearing. And if you turn the church into a nightclub, what can you not do in a nightclub? You can't hear. That's the problem with nightclubs. People go out and nobody can communicate with each other. Then the only thing they do is just get physical and then fornicate and then relationships that break apart because they don't communicate together. When you go to the house of God, if you're going to have church together, go to church, 
assemble yourself together, gather them, Lord, whatever it is you call it, you are to be there to hear and not give the sacrifice of fools. Ecclesiastes 5, verse 1. For they consider not that they do evil. Church can damn your soul to hell. How is different ways churches damn souls to hell? Many professing Christians are going to hear in that day, depart from ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. What's that place called? What is that place of everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels called? Hell. And who is Lord going to say this to? Those that call him Lord, because to say to them, I was a hungry, gave me no meat. I was a thirsty, gave me no drink. I was naked, gave me not. I was sick and in prison, visit me not. I was a stranger, and you took me not in. And they'll say to them, Lord. This is not the atheist. This is not the Buddhist. This is not the Hindu. This is not the Mohammedan. This is those that call Jesus Lord Christians. Whom Christ is going to say, depart from me, you cursed, and to everyone I say, prepare for the devil and his angels, because they did not to the least of these as brethren. Why? They're too busy giving to church. Church is too busy building buildings. Church is too busy saving money. And it's not going to the poor. And the Lord is going to judge people individually for not feeding the hungry, for not giving thirst, God giving drink the thirsty for not clothing the naked, for not visiting those in sick and in prison, for not taking the stranger in, because they're given to church. They're too busy putting their money into the church building. What's another way that church can damn your soul to hell? Too much singing. Singing all kinds of vain words. They don't even realize what they're singing. They're just singing along. They turn off their mind because of what? They're using what they call rock and roll, that is the beat, the sexual beat that that music is based on. Sensual music. Rock and roll is a fornicating term. A term used how people fornicate moving their hips. That's rocking and rolling. It's based on the back beat, which is known as the sex beat, which makes it sensual music. And sensual music, people turn off the reasoning part of the brain. They open the other parts of the brain up and think they're having some sort of spiritual experience when it's completely carnal and fleshly. They've turned off the reasoning. And now the words mean nothing. It's all about the beat. It's all about the rhythm. It's all about that backbeat. And they don't even care the words they're singing. And the Lord says they, they consider not that they do evil. Verse 2. Be not rash with thy mouth. Be careful what you say to the Lord. Be careful what you pray. Be careful what you sing. Let your yea be yea and your nay be nay. For Christ says, what cometh more of this is evil. Be not rash with thy mouth. And let not thy heart to be hasty to do anything before God. For God is in heaven and thou upon earth. Therefore let thy words be few. For a dream cometh through the multitude of business, and a fool's voice is known by multitude of words. When thou vowest a vow unto God, defer not to pay it, for yet no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Better is it that thou shouldest not vow, than thou shouldest vow and not pay. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin, neither say them before the angel that it was an error. Wherefore should God be angry at thy voice, and destroy the work of thine hands. When we pray, we say a very powerful word. It is a Hebrew word, amen, or amen. And amen in Hebrew, in English means, so be it. You are making a vow to God that what you pray, your believing shall come to pass. And if you waver, and you say, Amen. And you pray that, and then you look at circumstance, you look at this or look at that, and you waver. The Bible calls that evil. And the book of James says, Let not that man think that he should receive anything of the Lord. A double minded man is unstable in all of his ways. God is not into double mindedness. 
God is not into you pray one thing and do something different. God is not into that, and that is a sin in the sight of God, so much so, let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Praise God. Today, as I was in my prayer closet praying, and today I was going to pray on the rooftop of this building in a Thai sermon this late afternoon, and as I was praying about it, a storm came in. And of course, according to the news, there's all these typhoons coming in and all these different storms, and they've given warnings about flooding and how they're going to be big storms hitting Bangkok and hitting Thailand. And this afternoon, while I was praying, the dark clouds came, the wind was strong, and a big storm came in. But I had prayed already, and I had said amen about preaching that sermon there on the rooftop. And of course, as we got ready to preach this sermon, what happened beforehand? It stopped raining. But not only did it stop raining, the rain stopped right beside us. So much so that went up to the rooftop, you could feel the rain still sprinkling on the back of my head. But as I opened my Bible, began preaching, the rain stopped, did not touch us, though it was right there beside us. Again, at the beginning, the rain was hitting the back of my head. But then it stopped while I preached. And then when we finished preaching and came back down to our room, it began raining once again. Again, to receive answers to prayer, you cannot look at circumstance. You have to believe. Believe when you pray. When you say that word, amen, you better mean it. That what you prayed you believe shall come to pass because if you pray and you're not believing and you're wavering the bible says let not that man think that he should receive anything of the lord in ecclesiastes 5 it's called sin and they consider not that they do evil in the sight of god praying is not a game got to take prayer seriously and pray according to what God's word says. You have to pray in faith and believe when you pray that you receive those things you have prayed for. And when you say that word, amen, you had better mean it or it's a sin in the sight of God. Let's turn to the book of Genesis chapter 6. The first book of the Bible, Bereshit, Genesis, Hebrew Bereshit, Genesis, the beginning. And in Genesis chapter 6, it is written. Verse 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination, thoughts of his heart, was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he made man on the earth, and it grieved them in his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for repenteth me that I have made them, but Mo Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Today, around the world, especially here in Asia, we're seeing a lot of storms and flooding. Flooding that different parts of Asia have not experienced for decades. Flooding at an all-time high. Some are blaming this, and some are blaming that. But for us, whose focus in the Word of God, that is nothing compared to this time the days of Noah. Now, of course, there's been some bad flooding here in Thailand. There's been some bad flooding in China and Lao PDR and Vietnam and even in Europe and different countries have having very bad floods, flood, flooding that they have not experienced for decades. Very bad floods. And it's very bad. And it's amazing how bad these floods are. But it's nothing compared to this time. This was a worldwide flood. 
in Genesis chapter 6. The deep broke apart. It was a war of rain for 40 days and 40 nights, and the whole earth was underwater at that time. Why? Because God was judging that sinful world. What was so sinful about them? Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination and thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. This is why the Lord judged the earth at that time with the worldwide flood. Why? Because the imagination and thoughts of man's heart was only evil continually. Hold your finger here. Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24, verse 36. The Lord Jesus Christ says, But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days of before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, and giving a marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. What was wrong with their eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage? Because, again, we see as in the days of Noah, no, Genesis chapter 6, verse 5, every imagination and the thoughts of man's heart was only evil continually. They were eating and drinking like normal. Married and given marriage like normal. But it's the imagination of thoughts of the heart was only evil continually. And the Lord Jesus Christ says, So shall it be also before the Son of Man cometh. Before Christ comes again, this shall be the state of the world, that the imagination of man's heart shall, only, shall be only evil continually. And today... We're seeing that fulfilled. Before, here in Thailand, you only had five channels on the TV to watch. And they were very serious of what you could watch and could not watch on the television. All they had was five channels. That's it. The radio stations only had a few radio stations, and they had strict laws, what you could sing about, what you could not sing about. And they sing the same songs about chili pepper, they sing about the silacha sauce. They sing 30 some years ago, that's what they sing about. They sing about chili peppers. Oh, picky noo, oh, picky noo. They sing about chili pepper. They sing about the silacha sauce. Silacha, silacha. They sing, they sing about these funny things like that. That's all they, they couldn't sing what they're singing today. Today, in Thailand, it is embarrassing what they're singing about today. It is shockingly bad what they're singing about today, what they're rapping about, what their songs are based upon today on the radios or on the internet, where it is they're hitting that music. It is shockingly bad today. And then the television, and not just the television now, the internet. And people can feed off evil continually, putting that stuff into their thoughts, into their hearts, and just continually a perpetual evil feast, continually. And as they feed so much on the evilness, whenever it is they're off of it, that's what's inside their hearts. Again, Thailand used to have a heavy censorship. There was a time in this country, pornography was illegal. And to buy porn, it was easier to buy drugs than it was to buy pornography 30-some years ago in Thailand. But now with the internet, people can feed off that continually. So much so, there's people that is addicted to things like that here in this country now. And not just here, around the world. The thoughts of their hearts are evil continually. 
the things are put into them from the music, the news today, the media, from the stuff they're getting off the internet is just evil and they're feeding off this continually. And all the thoughts of their heart are just evil. It is out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And today when we talk with people and minister to people, it is evil what comes out of their mouth. They can't help it what comes out of their mouth. Just last month, I was on the Thai, I was in Lao PDR. When I came back to the Thai Laotian border at the Moktahan bus station, there were some Western men that knew me as a preacher of the gospel. They saw my Bible and they heard me preaching at Lao PDR as I preached a whole group of them, praise God. And now at the bus station, they boldly told me that they had found a weed shop, a shop selling marijuana, cannabis, and then he boldly told me, I'm going to get high as, and said the F word. No shame whatsoever, boasting about getting high, bold about it, a sin that should make you ashamed of yourself, what that drug does to people and does to their minds. Yet, he was so bold, and they say it boldly with a curse word to a preacher of the gospel with no shame whatsoever. Their, the thoughts of their heart is only evil continually. How can you fix it? By building a big church? No. People going to church does not change them. You can put a person at a zoo, it does not mean they become an animal. I've gone to zoos many of times. I've never been transformed into an animal in the zoo. You can go to parking lots. It does not mean you're a vehicle. You can walk around a parking lots. I've gotten lost in parking lots walking around before. I did not become a vehicle in the parking lot. You can put a sinner in church. He still remains a sinner in church. And now churches today in the day we're living in are being seeker sensitive and make the sinner feel right at home. Make him feel like he's in a nightclub. Make him feel comfortable in the church building. No conviction, no repentance. Make them feel comfortable. Worried about what the sinner feels like. Worried about how the sinner feels or thinks and trying to make the sinner feel comfortable in a church building. That will not convert a sinner. In fact, that converts the church. That converts the saints into sinners doing such a thing. And now we're seeing the so-called saints dressing immodestly, singing sensual music, and the sermons are compromised so much, though, that it's an abomination in the sight of God as they're ashamed of the words of Christ. And what does Christ say if you're ashamed of his words? He shall be ashamed of you before his Father and the angels. And today, churches are ashamed to preach the words of Christ, afraid they're going to offend the sinner. So a sinner going to church does not change him. What if we change the laws of the land? What if we change this law and that law? It does no use, has no use on a sinner. I remember back years ago, they celebrated how they shut down same-sex marriage in different states in America. Churches thought they had victory. Look at it today. Where is that victory now? Just because you change the law does not change sinners. And there's Christians wasting their time trying to make abortion illegal. So what you do so? They're still going to do it. They'll do it illegally. You're not going to change sinners by changing the laws of the land. How many Protestant Christians are not redeemed at the time because the days are evil? They're too busy getting involved in politics thinking if they elect such and such a politician, things would change. You could put the very best politician in charge. He could be a spirit-filled, Holy Ghost, Bible-believing, gospel-preaching preacher and elect him, and it's not going to change the sinner. Politicians and laws do not change the sinner because the, the thoughts of their hearts is only evil continually. Changing the laws does not do so. Defending yourself, owning a gun, to protect yourself from the sinner will not change the sinner. Will not say, oh, that Christian is a gun. <laughs> I better treat him better. I should go to church and get saved. That does not do anything to the sinner. Fighting the sinners. Let's go do war against terrorism and put a war on terrorism. 
It did not change the tariffs. All you did was make tariffs increase. Years ago, back in 2001, there was an American man who was a Roman Catholic. I had given him a gospel tract and it offended him so much he wanted to sue me in court. And of course, what was my answer to him? Sue me for what? <laughs> you can't sue me. What do you want? My shirt? That's all I'm going to get? That's all I've got. He wanted to sue me because of that track. And then 9-11 happened. And then America then attacked a country that had nothing to do with 9-11. They started bombing Iraq for other reasons other than 9-11. And that Roman Catholic American had a newspaper and showed them bombing Iraq and came to me and said, Praise the Lord, the wrath of God. Did that help anything? Did that stop terrorism? No. What's the only thing that would stop a terrorist? What's the only thing that would stop an abortionist? What's the only thing that would stop a sodomite? What's the only thing that will stop sinners from sinning? You've got to change their hearts. And there's only one way for the heart of a sinner to be changed. John chapter 3, verse 7. John chapter 3, verse 7, it is written, Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. Why must we be born again? Verse 3, Jesus answered and said to him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Verse 5, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Verse 7, Marvel not said unto thee, ye must be born again. That's the only way for sinners to be saved, for lives to be transformed, to be changed. They must be born again. What happens when a person is born again? 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17, it is written. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. How to become new creatures in Christ? Does your hair color change? Does your skin color change? How do you become a new creature in Christ? What does that mean? Romans chapter 5, verse 5, it is written, And hope maketh not ashamed, for the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts, but because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. When a person is born again in Christ, they become a new creature. They become new because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given to us, as is written, Hebrews chapter 8. Verse 10, for this is the covenant that I'll make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I'll put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I'll be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. How does God write his laws in our heart? By the love of God being shed abroad our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. What happens walk in that love? Romans chapter 13 says, says, we fulfill the law by love. And how can we fulfill the law by love? By being born again and becoming a new creature in Christ. By the love of God being shed abroad in our hearts. By the Holy Ghost who is given to us. That's how God writes his law in our hearts. By the Holy Ghost where we're born again by God's love being shed abroad in our hearts. By the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. Because once again... In John 13, verse 34, Jesus Christ says, A new commandment give I unto thee. What is that new commandment? That ye love one another as I have loved you. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. That's how we can be known as disciples of Christ. We're to love one another as Christ loved us. How can we do so? By being born again. By the love of God being shed upon the hearts of the Holy Ghost given unto us. By having a new heart. By God writing his law in our hearts and 
putting his laws into our mind. How does God put his law into our mind? We see how he writes his laws into our heart by the love of God being shed upon the hearts of the Holy Ghost given to us. We walk in that love, loving one another as Christ loved us. We fulfill the law. But how does God put his laws into our mind? Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, verse 1, by the mercies of God, they present your bodies in the sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye what? Transformed. How could be transformed? By the renewing of your mind, that you may prove it is that good, acceptable, that acceptable and perfect will of God. How do we renew our minds? By the word of God. That's why we spend hours in God's word daily, day and night. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, But this book of the law shall not depart of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. That thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein, then thou shalt make the way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success day and night. As Jesus Christ says, man shall live by bread alone, but by every word which proceeded out of the mouth of God. As much time as you spend eating, you should spend that much time or more in God's word, renewing your mind. Because apart from being transformed, apart from being regenerated, apart from your heart becoming new with the love of God, being shut up in our hearts from the Holy Spirit to us by God putting His law in our hearts, apart from God putting His laws into our mind by us renewing our mind with the Word of God, our thoughts will be only evil continually. And that's why God judged the world then and is going to judge the world now because of the thoughts of man are only evil continually, even churchgoers. Even those sitting in the churches, lusting, because women are dressed immodestly, and men are in churches lusting after women in church buildings, while they're so-called worshiping, lusting, their thoughts are only evil continually. Coveting, coveting people's wives, coveting women, coveting things, their thoughts are only evil continually and thinking evil of their neighbors. As many even Christians are smoking drugs as well, whether it be marijuana, meth, whatever drug may be, it causes them to think evil of their own brethren. Thinking thoughts are not even real. Thinking people are trying to get them, speaking evil about them, trying to kill them, have paranoia in their mind, causing them to sin when they're thinking they're just defending themselves, they're just protecting themselves of things that are not even there and not even true. Their thoughts are only evil continually. And that's why God judged the world then with the flood of Noah. And that's why God's going to judge the world again after Christ raptures his church from this earth. And people talk about getting on the ark. People talk about this or that is the ark. No, you must be born again. In order for you to be set apart to escape the judgment of God, you must become a new creature in Christ. It's those that whose thoughts are not evil continually, saints, sanctified. Their thoughts are pure. Their desires are pure. When God sees our heart, he sees pure desires, pure thoughts, he sees a sanctified saint. And that's who the Lord is going to present to himself. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Beginning verse 26. Verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he may sanctify and cleanse it with the washing water by the word, that he may present it to himself a glorious church. What church is Christ coming for again? A glorious church. What is a glorious church? A church that sings all the time? A church that has such wonderful worship? No. 
a glory search search that's not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that should be holy and without blemish. That's the church Christ will present to himself a glorious church. And to be a part of that church, you must be sanctified and cleansed with the washing of water by the word. We're called to be saints. We're called to be sanctified. As is written, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be able to serve blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Why would the apostle pray God this for? Because if not, you're not going to be ready when Christ comes again. You're not going to be raptured when Christ comes again. You're not going to be part of that glorious church unless you're sanctified wholly. That your whole spirit, your whole soul, and your whole body be preserved blameless of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ is coming for a glorious church, a church that is sanctified. And those whose thoughts are only evil continually, that's who God is going to judge. That's the way of the world today, just as it was in the days of Noah. We have this warning from God's word. It's not about if you go to church or not. It's not about if you're a Christian or not. It's about are you born again? And the thoughts of your heart, are you sanctified? Have you been sanctified and cleansed by the wash of water of the word? That's why the psalmist wrote, and the Israelites of the Ghost, that he may hide God's word in his heart, they not sin against the Lord. This is why it's very careful what songs you sing. That's why we sing hymns that contain Christian doctrine. So we're singing that in our heart, making melody to the Lord. It's songs that are pure. Songs that are right. Songs that glorify the Lord. This is why we renew our minds with the Word of God daily. Spending hours in God's Word to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Because we're coming close to that day. No man knoweth the day there that Christ cometh again. That are the angels of heaven. But he is coming again. We're seeing the signs of the times. And we see these signs. You want to make sure you're not part of those who are going to be judged whom, whom the thoughts of their heart are evil continually. You're born again, sanctified wholly with your whole spirit, soul, and body, but as are blameless to the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank thee for thy word which endureth forever. Pray that even sanctifies with thy truth. For thy word is truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord.